Hello, this is War Weasel again. It's been a while since I've put anything up, so I thought I would at least talk about what I've been doing recently. If you remember, last time I was working and I had some punching and kicking and some AI going on and I could punch and have a little bit of fun that way. Have all this stuff going on. Well, I was in a dire need of, well, frankly, a code cleanup. My code was absolutely terrible, and there was no way that I could get my NPC here to do any of the things that my character could. Uh, I couldn't get him to fight, really. I couldn't let him use any of my code. Just everything was so messy that I couldn't pull one thread without uh, unraveling the entire the entire sweater so to speak uh, so I started a a refactor refactor one although this isn't really my first refactor but it's the first one that's had oh my oh yes I will need that but right now, I have most of my functionality in here somewhere, if not exactly hooked up. Uh, but I do have interactions working. Right now, this is really just... Why is that not taking any... Oh, that's weird. Let's see. This hmm. wonder what's going on here. Well, well, the my controller isn't working, but that's no big deal. Not with this guy. This, if you look closely, is really just the third person, uh, third person character from the uh, third person. Uh, generic startup uh, project. So there's really nothing here. Uh, if I go slowly, he's not really doing much. That really bothers me for some reason. Huh. Well, he is not liking that. Okay. Oh, it's malfunctioning. Glorious. But what he can do is he can do animations. I don't have it hooked up because I don't have an inventory for him. He can open things up. He can do switches. So I have all the interaction stuff working. Uh, that's working pretty well. Uh, I just need to add the, the combat. But as you can tell, the animations are really... I'm going to use the word janky. Also... I have a an ALS based NPC character. If you notice there are no cameras on this character. So we'll just jump there. Take a look at the viewpoint port. I've gotten rid of all the stuff that is required for a real character and now just the NPC is sitting here without any cameras or anything like that. Uh, he doesn't need all that. He doesn't need a lot of this. Uh, but right now I don't have time to go through ALS and rewrite it so that I have a more generic NPC class underneath of a, you know, my player class, which is up here. Now my player class, I can play him, but I'm not... He's not hooked up right now. He doesn't have any of that. But I wanted to go through and show what I've done how I've done it and explain a bit of why I've done this. It's a little bit crazy, but it, it should not take long. Here's my here we are, my base NPC. I don't want him. I want to edit my third person character. As you can see this is a good chunk of this is straight from here. Oh that's why that's not working. Glorious, yes. All right. I'll have to fix that in a bit. However, 
You have begin play. I have to get a connection to my anim instance. And then I have to bind a couple events. Let me rewind. Right now, I have three different classes of character, and I may have more. And I want to be able to, well, ideally just drag and drop you know, my interaction component and have it work. Unfortunately, that's not the way everything works, unless I can find a way to uh, manually create some uh, notification events. But since I don't know how to do that and I haven't had time to, to really look that up, uh, what I have here are just a couple of wired in events that go from the animation blueprint all the way to the interaction handler. I'm sorry, the interaction component. The interaction component is basically what handles my interactions. I have some, oh, sorry, I'm still my third person character. But if I go to this and I edit it, you know, I have add to inventory, which may be, uh, you know, I don't have anything hooked up to that right now. Uh, this is just something that's going to get called and I can listen to it from my character class here, like down here. When I get, uh, you know, my, you know, melee collision and my disable melee collision and my event interacts, I can actually get events from my interaction components. So I can add event, item picked up, item start, animation start, interaction end, all these, and it just handles all of my state or picking and animations and holding all the animation pairs for all the different things that this character can do and with all of the objects it can perform those actions on. Um, very vague but then again it it's meant to do a lot of different things from flipping switches to handling uh, m scripted melee events of you know when the, both characters have to move with the same animations at the same time. Uh, you know, I have an inventory component, which so far has been pretty good about not caring about anything other than itself. And a weapon component, which I know works, but I'm going to have to uh, modify it a little bit more uh, to not look for a particular kind. You know, here's my character weapon, my owner character you know, has to be an actor. So that's pretty good. Uh, they are all actors. So I'm, I'm lucky there. So, but I've been working really hard to try to bring together the ALS base class. Where's my ALS? Blueprints. I have an ALS base care, ALS base character which is the ALS base character, you know, the ALS base character is actually just a child of, and I don't think it actually changes anything. I think I moved everything to the base character. And then I have a base NPC, which is a complete copy, because I had to remove some things and, you know, having to copy all that code and trying to get everything working in the right places just seemed like an overwhelming uh, project at the moment and that's not what I want to get into so I thought having a little bit of overhead because I have a you know an NPC class a base care you know base character class or player as which is the player character class and then I'll have a third person character right now just to prove out that I, it, all this can work uh, outside of the ALS framework on top of that, I'm probably going to have multiple, you know, multiple levels of characters, multiple levels of NPCs with different levels of animation, uh, because I'm hoping to have a lot of them. Uh, I really uh, want to push the idea that they are in a city, 
so I don't know how many of these uh, ALS characters I can have, but taking out everything I can from them is probably the uh, best way best way to handle that. Whew. You know, and this is just time consuming. Moving everything over, cleaning the code, giving it a nice polish. Uh, I've done a couple nice things just to make things look a little bit nicer. I like to make every different project look a little bit different so that I can tell them at a glance. This one, and I don't know how many people know about this, but if you got the chameleon of what post-processing system, uh, whatever it is, it was free a while back, so that's how I got it. One of the directories is full of LUTs, and I can't remember exactly what they're uh, what they are, but really they're just uh, images that convert colors to colors. So for all however many colors there are, it can switch them to other colors. So if you wanted to do something interesting, like just alienize everything, this is filmic horror night, but let's go to, let's say mono, Mono 1, here we go. It automatic noir, new noir city feel to it. Uh, right now I'm using this filmic horror night, which I really like. You know, there are others, you know, Last Hope, uh, Nature Rise. Of course, I can get rid of it altogether, and it's just, it was oversaturated, especially the colors that I'm using. So let me pop that back up, go back to filmic, ooh, Middle Earth, yay. So that's there for us to use. Uh, if you really want to do like the alien look, kind of like a predator mode, that's really neat. Um, yeah, on top of that, I needed to have a post-processing volume so that my character, so that everything can pulse like this. Yeah. And just pulling everything out and making sure it's separate from this whole ALS baseline uh, or the, the advanced locomotion system that I've been so used to using. Uh, I have you no know, weapon component, unnecessary, but it's just some crosshairs I needed. Uh, so there's almost nothing there. You know, the mannequin. These are some animations I needed from the third person in third person system. Uh, so I could have the uh, third person character running around. Uh, interaction, of course. But I didn't bring everything in. I, at least I didn't think I brought all of this in. You know, but the majority of it does come in. Uh, just because there's a connection to everything somewhere. Uh, eventually, I'll have to go through every file and get rid of what I don't need, like the weapon, all the car stuff and all that just needs to uh, go away. I'm not using cars. I don't want cars, that kind of thing. You know, I don't need the jet engine. I don't need the car stuff, uh, although I might use some of these in, you know, in the city. Uh it, it, it it's common for cars to be in the city, I believe. Yeah, so I don't know. I'm out here in, you know, Indiana. <laughs> but anyway, outside of that, my big push in the future is going to be to rewrite the ALS system in C and try to clean that up and to create a nice hierarchy. Uh, for my NPCs versus my, you know, non-NPCs. I would also like to, right now I have a big problem. See, my base NPC animation stuff. Let's see. Begin play. Ah, boy. Essential. I hate having to jump through like this. 
makes it look like I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> but here we are. We have event graph, every frame, calculated central variables. Nope. Yeah, wow. Hopefully. Find my components. Huh. Well, I could have swear. Oh, that's because I'm in the base NPC. And I need to be. Base NPC animation BP. Okay, the NPC animation BP. So here we go. Initialize, set references, set default values. Here we go. This. Every time, all the time, I have to get the variables from here. From the, And that's just a lot. It seems to me like it would make more sense to just put these in a structure and pass them around. Maybe that's just me, but uh, also I'm not exactly certain how much of these I need, uh, how some of these work, etc. I pulled out all of the right foot forward stuff to simplify things even further. So this is kind of, I guess, almost half of the advanced locomotion system. But seriously, I, I have all this. Another thing I would really like to do is figure out what my level of detail is and adjust my animations based on that. Right now, I do a ton. You know, let's go to the animation graph. I do a ton in the state machine. Let's just go to the locomotion. You know, here's all this. You know, I have some pose blending. This isn't too bad because these this is a binary. Uh, but let's say we have our locomotion system. You know, I'm moving. And just look at this. Uh, whenever he's moving around, he is switch, you know, going between I think four of these at any point unless he's crouching. So several blend spaces and you multiply that for, you know, maybe 100, 200 characters. You know, that starts to add up. So what I would like to do is to find out the level of detail of my mesh and adjust uh, which state machine I use according to that. Uh, but right now, I have no idea how to figure out what my uh, level of detail is for my mesh. So you know, until I get that figured out, uh, that's a no-go. Uh, everything else, though, uh, looks good. I've been playing around with it. I've been having a lot of fun with it. Okay, that's not true. I haven't been having a lot of fun with it. I've been barely keeping it together, uh, ripping out pieces and putting pieces in and hoping that I didn't break the whole thing. But it's finally coming together into what I think is a manageable amount of source code, in or at least organized in a manageable way. Yeah, and that's all I have right now. I, I hope to have more soon, and then I hope to start working on my uh, interpersonal relationships. Yeah, my interpersonal, uh, sorry, my, my dialogue trees and my dialogue interactions to be able to start working on those and a few of what I call I call those and some of the other things uh, little mini games inside of here so I want to use those mini games and hopefully show show those later uh, whew, well I can't think of anything else now uh, I really like the coloring on this right now Granted, this is supposed to be hot pink. I think I would probably change it a little bit uh, in the end so that it looks more pink. But it's just desaturated. It has a really nice feel to it. I think if I darkened everything, it would be uh, nice and moody without having to do you know too much color work. 
and uh, with a little bit of work I can you know swap between indoor outdoor various moods etc all right well oh yeah I do have clothing working I didn't think about it but uh, if I wanted to I could throw some clothing on Let's see clothing oh no I didn't no I didn't this guy though does so if I do if I add some clothing I think I have a shirt yeah I only brought the shirt just to show that I could so here he is Mr. Mannequin the many faces of Mr. Mannequin and that I think is about it Thank you all for watching. I hope you had a great holiday and hopefully I'll be back soon with even more stuff. No, I'm not sure. <laughs>